Steam is a virtual storefront. But even though you can purchase a lot of games here, there are an enormous amount of free games as well. And unfortunately, an enormous amount of bad free games. So it takes some effort to separate the wheat from the chaff, as it were. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. Uh, first and foremost, go ahead and open up your Steam storefront. And then navigate to the left-hand bar here. There's lots and lots of different categories. We're going to look under Browse by Genre and click on Free to Play. Now up front, it's going to show you some of the newest and most played free-to-play free titles on Steam. That's one way to discover some games. Underneath, though, we see right away that there is Featured DLC. And this is one of the ways that the developers of free games get you to spend money on their games. So even once you're playing it for free, you can purchase items in the games, usually cosmetic items that just change the appearance of your character. But sometimes the games give you improved abilities or longer play time, or you can get more hints, things like that. Uh, sometimes the games are just advertising, as we'll see in a, a game that I'll feature later on in this video. But for now, just be aware that it is possible to end up spending a lot of money on free games. So if you don't have a lot of money to spend on games and you just want to play free games, you have to avoid this temptation. So just be aware of it. It is out there. Underneath that is recommended new releases based on what you've been playing. I haven't found this very useful personally, but your mileage may vary. And then underneath that... We're there is a proper list here of new and trending games. We can also select top selling, what's being played, upcoming. I'm going to browse through some of this and just give you a couple pointers based on what I see. Right. So I always like to look out for this tag here that says massively multiplayer. That is, uh, especially if you're looking for games for children, um, going to be something that you want to be wary of because you have very little control over what if you're playing a massively multiplayer game, you're playing with other people uh, live online, and you have very little control over what those people are going to say and do. Um, they may have icons that they can change to various pictures. They There may not be a chat filter installed in any given game. People may know a way around the chat filter. So that's just something that you should watch out for. If you want to play a multiplayer game, it's best to play something that's like a four-player local game that you can play with friends who are physically in the room with you, right? That's going to give you more control over what's going on content-wise. Uh, speaking of content, it is difficult to know what the content of a particular game is because there isn't there isn't like movie ratings. It's not PG, G, PG thirteen. What you're going to have to do is just be kind of savvy about what the game looks like. It's about. And also you can kind of click through and um, read reviews. That's another resource that I think is very useful. And by the way, a, a useful thing to do in uh, Biblio Commons at the, the Tulsa City County Library website, our catalog, if you're ever concerned about the content of an item, check out the reviews on that item. I'm going to click on <laughs> Checks Quest HD. And this appears to be advertising. And it is indeed published by General Mills. So this is uh, advertising for cereal. On the other hand, it does look like a game. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of game it is, but we can click through the screenshots here. And it looks like some kind of first person shooter, if I had to guess. So there are aliens, and we're in a spacesuit exploring alien environments. I don't know what this has to do with checks. <laughs> this is pretty funny, actually. A, ah, I see, a modern multiplayer remake of the classic 1996 FPS first-person shooter adver game, advertisement game of the same name. Interesting. So uh, not something that I want to play. Um, by the way, there is an enormous amount of adult content on Steam, so just something to be aware of. That's why I highly recommend activating family mode if you're going to have children using Steam. And I uploaded a video last week and it's on our Facebook page. You should just search for family mode. And I'll put the link in the description of this video below too, so you can just click right to it. But it is how to activate family mode and uh, deny access to the storefront. So you won't be able to see stuff like this. What you'll do is you'll add games like Adventure Escape Mysteries, which I'll show you later in this video. 
and Island Saver, which I'll also show you later in this video. Um, you just add those to your personal library and then turn on family mode and then those are the only games that will be visible. Okay, so that's another tip I can give you. Uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and just look at these two games actually. These are two games that I've already picked out that I thought looked interesting to me and I thought would be good examples of free games on Steam. So with no further ado, let's just look at those right now. Island Saver has two main themes. The first theme is that you're cleaning up an island, saving it from pollution, from garbage all around. You have an item that sucks up the garbage, and the main action that you perform in the game is to clean up plastic bottles and blast uh, pollution ooze with water that you suck up. You shoot the bottles into a recycling machine, and it gives you money in exchange. By the way, the visual style of this game is very cute, and the animals that you're saving as you clean up the islands are pretty charming. Um, it reminds me a lot of a game called Slime Rancher, which is a very similar visual style. And also an older game called Viva Pinata, where, which had animals, pretend animals that had a lot of color and personality. So saving them is a lot of fun in this game. But the second theme of the game is money. And the... Uh, Apparently, the makers of this game were hired by a bank called National West, a Great Britain bank. And the game introduces you to the concepts of creating your own PIN code, memorizing that PIN code, uh, depositing what is a deposit, depositing your money in the bank, why you would deposit money in a bank. So you're not actually creating a real bank account in this game, but you are being introduced to, to certain financial concepts, like interest, for instance, and how interest is earned and taxes and what they go towards because those recycling machines that we filled up earlier they get filled up pretty quickly and the only way to empty them is to exchange a tax token and that enables the government to empty the machine. The second game we're going to look at is called Adventure Escape Mysteries. Uh, it was originally a mobile game and it's been ported to the PC here and as you'll see it has the typical mobile game microtransactions in it, which is how the game is uh, able to be given away for free. But that said, it does have a lot of decent puzzles in it. I really enjoyed the first chapter of this pirate mystery here. There's combining items with the different items puzzles, there's sliding block puzzles, there's decoding code puzzles, there's observation type puzzles. And if you get stuck, there is a hint system. But therein lies the catch, because the hint system, as we'll see in a moment, is... Uh, you get, your, you get your first couple of hints free. That's how they hook you. Uh, these little glowy stars here, you can find them all around the game, and those are a free hint. The game fronts you 30 free hint points. Some hints cost more than others. This one costs one, and it's going to tell us the cabinet lock has a star, so does the coin on the wanted poster in the bottom row. So we're both supposed to get the correct code from that clue. And as we click through here, It'll show us that we can purchase more stars, purchase more clues. So that's the real catch, right? You don't want to end up spending a bunch of money on clues. But as I said, there's other puzzles in the game. There's uh, jigsaw puzzles. You're putting a pirate flag back together, sliding block puzzles. Um, but you always want to be careful with free games because the catch is always how to how can they afford to give this game away for free in the first game island saver it's essentially a long advertisement for a bank national west as we saw uh, and this second game actually wants you to spend money on it by purchasing clues and hints um, but as long as you're aware of what the game is trying to get you to spend money on or why it's free how it's able to be free then you can go ahead and play free games with that caution in mind. Uh, I should also add that when you have Steam in family mode, I've tested it and it is apparently impossible to spend money, even if you've saved your credit card to your Steam account, it's impossible impossible to spend any money while family mode is on. Uh, now I can't give that 100% guarantee because there may be bugs here and there, there may be ways around it, but I have tested it and it is apparently supposed to be not possible to spend money while you're in family mode. 